All right, so we're posting our proving grounds. And then we're going to post responses to at least one other class member indicating a clear sketch preference and telling them why. That will be very helpful. And then once you see that you have replies, look at that input and you can start on your refined sketch. Now, for your refined sketch, it is helpful to think for yourself after you've looked at some of your classmates' examples, which one is going to translate best into black shapes. Again, you want to think this, not this. And so further design and simplification might be necessary. In assignment four, where we're going to post our refined sketch, I've posted my inspiration. And my inspiration is not just these old insignias, from different squadrons or different military branches, but also, and you can use this link to see more that are right now being used by our military. All good inspiration, along with any personal inspiration you have. But we're going to combine, or I am going to, as art director, uh, after getting these personal patriotic symbols from four different classes and I'm going to design them into wall coverings for the Veterans Center. So they're going to be murals inside the building. And I haven't been told yet what those walls are or how big they are, or what shape they are, so I can't do much. But what we can't, we know from the president that we need them to be reflecting of, of student identity. Right? Not just veteran identity, but NLC student identity. So that's why I really want to push that personal patriotic symbol. We could easily get a lot of clip art veteran symbols and design them into a wallpaper. What we want are student personalities to show through. Does that make sense? So as you're making a refined sketch, really play up the personality side because I want to be able to incorporate your stuff into a design kind of like this that can really make the interior of the Veterans Center more engaging and more reflective of our, of our campus and of our students. So what is the next step? Well, we got to take that refined sketch and post that. So how do we get from here to here? First thing, we need to organize our work a little bit, especially if we were sketching between last class and this class. So I just sketched on these index cards. I try to keep them nice and small. Now I'm going to take that. I'm going to save it to the desktop. And then I'm going to open up my folder and make a new folder for assignment four. I'm also going to make a new folder for proving ground number two. They are two different assignments, but they help each other. We have to finish the proving ground before we can work on the assignment. I'm now complete with assignment three. That was our animation. So next comes proving ground number two and then assignment number four. And I'm now working on proving ground number two. I'm going to bring that, those sketches into it. And each sketch, make sure you've labeled them even if you label them kind of wrong, right? The reason to label them is to help me see that you're meeting the requirements of the proving ground and to help your fellow classmates know which one to refer to, right? So central symmetrical, dynamic, play of positive and negative space. And the easiest way to do positive and negative space is to take a primary shape like the tiger's head here and then cut out of it a secondary shape. So I'm cutting out of it that combined circle and star emblem of the Flying Tiger Squadron, which was this volunteer veteran squadron, U.S. squadron that flew out of China. So in a collaboration with the Chinese airstrips and air force against Japan. So that was their unified symbol. All right. But I also have to choose which one I like the best. 
of these, right? And that's where the input from my fellow classmates can help. And if I'm thinking in terms of black shapes, I'm thinking more this, less this. I'm thinking the shapes that really hold together the best, because all of these can be filled in, but I'm liking this one. And that's my taste. I like how the wings are kind of flame-like. I like how it looks a little bit more like my heritage, which is German. It kind of looks like a, a European crest version of a flying tiger, right? And it's a little bit more abstracted. This one's a little, it's cuter and a little goofier, but I think my preference is this. So I would look at the comments and I would see, and I would see if there's ways I can alter that. But basically, well, let's just take that dynamic one. And I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to open in preview. This is just one way we can do it. New art from the clipboard. Right. And then I'm going to export it just to the de desktop. This is not my refined sketch. This is just the sketch approach I'm going to use to make my refined sketch. And you might end up changing it quite a bit. Who knows? So now I am done with proving ground two, especially if I've written comments to another student. And now I can start working on assignment four. So here's my sketch. Put it into assignment four. Now, how do I turn that into a refined sketch? Well, I'm going to open up PhotoP. And we're going to use our raster knowledge. So what's a smart way to try to turn this into black shapes to do this, right, to my line art? Yeah. So if I'm using, you could always open it in PhotoP and, and do cropping. But just to be fast, what I did was I double clicked it on a Mac and that opens it up in preview, which is Mac's basic media imaging. On a PC, that would be Windows Media Viewer. And then I just draw a box around to select the one I want. And then this is where you just can't find anywhere. <laughs> but to crop in preview is Command K. So you can crop it, but I didn't do that. I copied it, Command C. And by copying the selection, it puts it onto the clipboard. And then I can say File New from Clipboard. And it makes a new file that's just the selection. But Command K would actually crop it to the selection. But that's dangerous because you don't save in preview. It's just however you close it, that's what's saved. Does that make sense? Yeah, you would. I would lose the rest. And I'm leaving that in my proving ground. That's why I'm making two folders. I could also right click and just duplicate the file and then just move that into my assignment four folder. But assignment four starts from one approach. No, not, not all three. You want clarity about how you're moving forward before you start designing your, your finished assignment. Okay, so I've opened up my sketch in PhotoP. Doesn't matter really how big it is. I don't even need to check the image size because I'm not printing this. It's 72 pixels per inch by... 22 inches by 16 inches. That's just whatever my camera's resolution is. So that's fine. What I do want to worry about is how can I get a clean sketch from this? Well, I'm not going to get a clean sketch if I just start inking right on top of that same layer, right? So what I want to do is create a new layer. And if I'm doing this physically, like I did with the blue line on that slide, I'm just basically using a thicker tool, like using a Sharpie marker on top of your mechanical pencil to simplify it and to solidify the shape. Digitally, which is a great way to do this, I'm going to make a new blank layer. I'm going to lock the background layer so I don't accidentally draw on it. And on this new blank layer, I'm going to use my brush tool. 
which is really the first time we've kind of used this except for when I've just shown you digital sketching. Now with the brush tool, I'm going to make it hard edged and I'm going to make it fairly large. And because this is photo P, in order to make my tablet, which I'm using pressure sensitive, I need to click on this icon right here. Clicking on that icon will mean if I press lightly, it will fill a little bit. If I press heavy, it will fill a lot. So that gives me all of my line weight variations, which is why a tablet's so nice. So now I'm just going to go in and I'm going to define my shapes like I'm cutting them out of black paper. I'm going to turn the outlines of my sketch into solid black shapes. So there's my first shape. Tail. And my second shape. And this is a little sneak peek at what's called digital inking, which we'll be using for our illustration assignment. This is one way you can make clean line art. I'm going to separate the head for now. And I'm basically just tracing my shapes, and then I can clean it up after. I'm going to end it there. So now you can see I have those shapes. But I don't want this to be outlined, right? So I'm going to use my paint bucket and then just fill in that space. So now I have two shapes and I'm intentionally going to leave this little gap between them. I can take my lasso and kind of cut that out. And now I keep building with my brush. I'm going to extend that black paper cutout to this back foot and claw, and then can fill it in. And now I've got those two shapes. And I'm going to define it a little bit better. Use my lasso. I have a one pixel feather on my lasso, but I could do it with, with no feather as well. Cut out some more stripes there for whiskers. Okay, now I'm going to do the head. Maybe I zoom in a little bit for that. And the important thing is that you clean and finish off all of your shapes so that they're fully contained. You don't want open edges. So these eyes, I need to fully, these are cutouts. Let me go a little bit bigger. And I like how it kind of looks just like an abstracted kind of demon head. And then the mouth is going to be pretty tricky. I'm going to go a little smaller. That's why it's not outlined. It's going to be cut out of the shape. But the, what's tricky about it is the teeth. I wanted to show fangs. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's a great question. So what we're going to do I'll show you with the fill. I'll show you what's happening for you. I just did a, a thin outline, right, of what I want cut out. So now I need to fill in all this space with black, right? So I'm going to use the paint bucket. And what happens is when you fill it in, especially because I have that one pixel feather on my brush, I get what's called an anti-aliased edge, just from where the, the soft edge of the two shapes come together. But if I just click it again, that will fill it. 
and give me a really